Hello and welcome to the next session of Fearful Symmetries, which is a Trail Cthulhu campaign from Pelgrim Press, uh, which is about interwar, in our case, uh, 1930s uh, England and magicians who are attempting to find truth in the folklore of England and find a path to magic and battle against other magicians who are attempting to seize power within this sphere. We left off last time with uh, a, I want to say a jailbreak, but a jailbreak uh, of uh, Dr. Whitewood uh, from a uh, rest facility. And there were various other uh, investigations and things that were done, talking to various characters. There was some revelation about the, the map of London, for example, but the most important thing was the note that was found on the late Pierce's uh, uh, body uh, talking about what is clearly the plans for Portmore uh, and his organization. Uh, uh, you were able to piece together that he seems to have taken control of the various ley lines, uh, the, the the nodes that lie surrounding uh, uh, his estate uh, at, uh, I think, Mountjoy, uh, if I recall the, the name of it, uh, but with the suggestion that the last of these is uh, Winchester. Am I saying that, is, is that the correct British, but I'm just yeah. making sure on that, because you do all sorts of weird things uh, with those those words. Uh, uh, Winchester, which has, of course, the Win Winchester Cathedral, uh, you know, has a, a lovely uh, working mill in the heart of it. It's it's a a former seat of uh, English, uh, uh, the English kings. Al Alfred uh, established it. Some people associate it with a certain kind of Camelot uh, for for England. Uh, you looked at. One of the prophecies that was mentioned regarding uh, Merlin. Uh, you also found out about uh, a gentleman named Noises, uh, who has been uh, traveling about, who seems to come from the area. There were mentions of the Roman burrows and tunnels uh, from the original uh, Roman settlement, uh, which I believe, if my notes serve me, uh correctly was gosh i thought i had written that down but uh essentially the romans founded uh uh, uh winchester or at least founded in that yes we, we we found it and made it uh uh we 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 kicked out those who were here before in that uh classic way uh so uh uh there were some things on the list as uh wishes from last time uh, uh so let's see uh some more magic so if people want to talk about the magic books and things uh like that uh uh more fascist magicians we'll get that uh a grotesqueries we'll get that um uh run into noises um and that's uh, the, the the big thing. So, and again, to the meta of this, uh, before we get too much further, we had a conversation about this last time. Uh, there were two big directions to go in, London or Portmore, and the decision was to head for Portmore, and we will, we will save the London episodes, that, that whole thing, uh, for a third and final arc of uh, this particular uh, series. So that is a, a another day. So Dr. Whitewood, you make your way back to Oxford, I assume. Yes, to, um, to... having stolen some clothes. Yes. Uh, uh, so I do imagine, uh, you know, early mornings, uh, uh, the, the streets of Oxford, you kind of walking through uh, 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 avoiding not not very very explicitly, but but avoiding the eyes of any policeman that might be around and about. 
uh, uh, and making your way in the early morning uh, there. And Wilfred, I imagine that you are up early, uh, uh, you know, a uh, cup of tea uh, when you hear the the, the, the door rang on the servant's door at the back. Yes. <laughs> and you will go Wait back up. there and you'll What's see up? very back to how he looked when you found him in London, perhaps even worse. Yeah, looks like I've been sleeping under hedges for a couple of days as I've walked from Colchester to Oxford um, um, using the highways and byways. But um, it's as if nothing has changed. Ah, oh, my dear Wilford, am I in time for breakfast? Indeed you are, Doctor. Do you want to say a bar first? Ah, uh, no, I think breakfast. Very well. Well, there's a pot of tea on. Let's have some of that. And, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get you sorted out. Ah, jolly good show. all. Jolly good. Thank you, Wilford. Uh -huh. you. Oh, it's good to be back. It's good to have you back, Doctor. Good to have you uh, back. Yes, now, you sit down here in the parlour. Dreaming spires. Tea. I've been dreaming of spires, Wilford. Ah, that sounds like Winchester. Winchester! Yes, Winchester! Winchester spires. All in good hands, Doctor. All in good hands. There is a conspiracy at large, Wilford. Oh, Portmore. Uh, no, Richard even my dear friend. My dear friend, Jean, had me locked up when I hinted at the, um, the importance of Winchester. Scoundrel. What a scoundrel. Still, you're in safe hands now, Doctor. Indeed. You just lie Indeed. low here. Breakfast, have, then have I breakfast. think a bath. Excellent. Uh, and I think while he sits down to breakfast, I will uh, go and knock knock the others awake and just warn them through the door that the doctor's returned. He's not too good for wear. And, and, and I think you will, will maybe be a little bit too late to catch uh, Mrs. Whitwood, uh, uh, who will come to where you're at and will say... Begging your pardon, Mr. Wilford, but seems to me you may perhaps been an influence on Mr. Uh, the, the, the good doctor. He seems a, a little rough, one might say. Uh, I think you're 100% right there, Mrs. Whitwood. I, I tried uh, to suggest on... tried to suggest a cleanup, but uh, he wanted his sausages first. I well, I, I'll persuade him to take a bath after that. And don't worry. I'll scrub it out after him. Well, well, good. Well, then I I will be going to the stores then for a few hours, and uh, if you'll get him cleaned up, because I don't I don't want to be trailing around behind that all day. No, no, totally agree. And he doesn't really know to stay in the back rooms like I do. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, oh, no. it's just none of that, Mister Wilford. You're very, very, very manner gentleman. Thank you very much. Leave it with me. We'll get him sorted. Thank you. And she will grab grab her 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 baskets and, and head out uh isabella richard richard i think you probably at your apartment but will arrive knowing that instinctively that that whitewood has returned and and isabella you will perhaps be shocked at the state of of whitewood where richard might not be richard will place both hands on whitewood's shoulder and give him a firm handshake and say Marvellous to see you back in good spirits, Doctor. I, I trust our journey's served you well. I indeed, indeed, uh, between mouthfuls of sausage. <laughs> you have a little much brief. more interested in the food than the conversation, it must be said <laughs> yes. at this point. Yes, yes. Uh, and I'll, I'll leave you to it. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Isabella? Oh, Isabella peeks in and she goes, good morning. Is it oh, nothing I get up. Unusual I get up my... Dear Miss Grimaldi, it's such a pleasure to see you again. Uh, it, she goes, sit down, sit down, have your breakfast. I'm just going to pop in and make some coffee, okay? Uh, very good, very good. How very colonial of you. <laughs> uh, she sort of stops and says, hmm, uh, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, she, um, she makes a, what do you say, a very strong brew. Yeah, there you go. Uh, and so I imagine there's some general discussion. There's some cleaning up. 
uh, uh, before. I think we cut to maybe a little bit later in the day, the four of you in that that study that has been been cleaned up uh, that I know Isabella has been using from from time to time uh, uh, well, with the information having been shared, I assume. Um, uh, and you have heard that there is something at, at, at Winchester, uh, that that is certainly Portmore's uh, uh, goal. The question is, do you want to head to Winchester? Do you want to head to one of the other uh, points for the stones? Do you want to head to, to Mountjoy? What is the direction? What is it that, that you feel you need to do? Well, we know that noise came looking for us, um, or at least came, yes, came looking for Sebastian. So it does suggest that perhaps there is something that we need to know there. And if that's the next goal, it might be nice to at least maybe spike it for um, for our foe so that it is not easy taking. But um, yeah, that would be my my suggestion. Plus, I've never been there. So. You have to begin somewhere. Mm -hmm. Seems as fitting a place as any. As long as we are entirely agreed that we must end walking. Uh, I certainly agree with that, Dr. Whitewood. Definitely sounds like us. An excellent plan. Very good. I shall retire and prepare to travel. Perhaps a clean shirt, Doctor. Is there anything anyone wishes to do in preparations or anything else before you would be departing from Oxford? I would like, we've already looked at the Lesser Medallion of Yuthanelli. Uh Did we have a look at the Naturalist Magic? I don't think we had time yet so far, had we? Uh, no, book. you can certainly do that. Uh, if you will make an occult spend. Yes. Down to one in the coats. <laughs> uh, that will pay off uh, as a three point pool uh, for uh, a cult. Okay. Uh, which you can also use essentially, you know, for casting spells and so on. Does that seem like a fair way to handle that? That seems like a fair way to handle that. Yes. Okay. Uh, Naturalist magic, obviously, it's uh, rather brilliant. It has uh, several interesting treatises on uh, where one could, you know, perhaps draw power from nature itself to augment uh, one's faculties. Andy, fascinating. And uh, I believe that Isabella, you are actually going to cast a spell. Oh yeah, uh, the come see me. Yes. Uh, so that spell, uh, requires you to, to create a, a candle, uh, to do that, um, uh, and it costs you three stability. Okay. And, uh, then there is a difficulty five, uh, stability test. Okay. Um, difficulty five. Okay. And I use for that um, just ability or is it like I use magic or? You can use, uh, you can spend magic okay. uh, uh, to substitute as well. If you make an art spend, uh, that will lower the difficulty by one. Art. Any art? Yes. Oh, Um. I will definitely do that because I have acting. Okay. Um, so certainly. Uh, let's see here. So I think 
um, how about a point of magic and a point of acting? Okay. Uh, okay. So you're going to roll with a uh, plus three against difficulty four. Okay. Love the roller. Uh, sorry, I haven't brought that up yet. I gotta get that. Okay, and so that's one six. Oh my gosh, that is in full. Yep. Okay. So that's a four. Okay, so, so four uh, plus, uh, four plus. Seven. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so we will see you only know a little bit about this figure, but mm -hmm. you will. Apples and hedgehogs. Right. So there you uh, go. Uh, you will, will make make that uh, uh, casting and let that out into the world. We'll see the results of that the, the potentially the next day. Okay. Wolf, Wilford, is there anything that you are doing in preparation for this travel? Uh, no, apart from going to the pantry and getting a good selection of food uh because i do not like spending money because i don't have it mm -hmm. on traveling so no that's with me there are some interesting spells but i think spells i'm interested in are more in the heat of battle mm -hmm. so i no i'm fine okay dr whitewood i think um secrete a kitchen knife in my luggage okay and have a shave. Okay. Uh, 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 fu fully cleaned up. Uh, uh, do you, do making, you go to the making, barber as well? Uh, I think I'd have to, wouldn't I? Yes. Because I'm not going to get that cleaned up at home. Okay. So, yes, I, I I do my very best to look my most respectable self. Yeah. You, you go to the cheapest barber there close by Oxford, the one that the students go to. Uh, 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 get yourself uh, cleaned up well and and head back. And Richard? Um, I mean, what, what's left on our list of magical items that I haven't looked at? <laughs> um. Was that a cult that I got, or was it magic? Uh, so that would be a cult. A cult, cool. Yeah. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Uh, do I... I still have my Egg of Protection, don't I? I don't think it ever got... No, it got used up, didn't it? Yes, it did. The, yes. Uh, hmm. I guess I'd like to make another Egg of Protection then, I suppose. Okay. Came in useful last time. Who knows what might happen this time? Uh, stability test for cost yep. creates protection pool can be enchanted for an additional one to yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, I will spend. Can I spend my occult to create a pool here? Yes, you can. Okay. Would that create three stability points? Well, uh, uh, for spell casting, yes, because you already yeah. know the spell. Cool. Then I will spend one of those new occult points, uh, which gives me a three. And you know what? I'll spend two of them, in fact, and that'll give me a six. So I'll spend. H how does that work? Sorry. It's... If I spend three, is that the amount of points that go into the egg? I believe so. Okay. So I will just spend the one of those points then and then i'll have a plus three on my roll which in theory should be enough for it to, to absolutely work. yeah just don't roll, roll a one right because that's is that it, it just just says it's a little weak when you roll yeah. a one okay three oh, oh yeah, well fine yeah so it's an egg of protection and again that will be for um Magics. Magical harm, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
and I will actually spend one point of my stability to turn that into the one that get, lets me uh, gives me like a sense that magic is being worked against me before yeah. it actually impacts. So yeah, that seems fair. Uh so uh, all of you will will gather yourselves together and you will head uh, uh, into the car. I assume with uh, Isabella driving again uh, uh, and. Uh, heading southward from uh, uh, Oxford. Are you bypassing London, Isabella? Um, yes, which is which is pretty much just all around better anyway when you're trying to drive. Um, okay. So, yes. Uh, so from Oxford uh, uh, down to, to London, uh, around London, uh, heading uh, uh, southwards towards Winchester. I believe it's only like 50, 60 miles uh, between the two. Um, and I think you're uh, just a, a little ways outside, south of London, uh, uh, on one of these roads, uh, when you will see a, a hitchhiker. Um, you will see a, you've seen that several of them, you know, uh, this is a is a time when there are people that are are hitchhiking uh, uh, relatively consistently, uh, especially younger folk. But uh, you will see a an older gentleman. Let me put a picture in the thing. Need image. Let's see what we did with him. Some of those cases where I could have had this up already. No. No. Sorry. Gentleman there. Uh he almost has the, the look of a of a sailor in some ways. Uh the the great big bushy sideburns. Uh, uh, the, the, the bald head, uh, uh, walking along, uh, oh yeah, I'll, I'll, I will, will, as you suggest, screen share that so we get this to the high def here. Uh, so there is Mr. Noise. Right next to the Italian. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, uh, he has a, a couple of uh, uh, bags with him. Uh, uh, and uh, he is is hitching southwards as you uh, drive up. Um, let's see here. It, I think actually probably Wilford's driving and I'm sitting beside him with the maps. Um, and um, I would like, oh, oh, let's pull over, Wilford. Um, and as we stop, she'll sort of open the door and she'll go, Mr. Noise? That would be what I am called. Ah, uh, would you like a ride? That would be appreciated, if you don't mind, ma'am. We're heading to Winchester. Well, you have to take the long way around, won't you? If you say so. Um, and... She will scoot over, so... Oh, no, ma'am, I couldn't sit up front. She goes, mm, all right, then. And uh, she'll step out, and she'll have Dr. Whitewood sit in front. Uh, and uh, he will, will look at uh, all of you, kind of does uh, nod his head. He seems maybe a little embarrassed uh, uh, to, to be seated next to you, uh, uh, Isabella. Um, but, uh, uh, he will say, uh, so may I ask, and this is probably after you started off again, uh, if you're heading to Winchester, uh, are you, are you planning on announcing yourselves or? Not. 
is do we need to announce ourselves? Well, here is the thing is uh, you could right now uh, drive on in, uh, head on in, uh, but but the things that have their feet firmly set in Winchester would know of your coming. Okay. Uh, the, the other option, and there are more options than this, but these are the two that come to my mind. Uh, and I am a simple man. So two things is about all I can hold in my head at a time. Uh, uh, but the other option is uh, we head uh, a little ways off and uh, we walk the South Downs way for, for, for a bit. Uh, might be uh, a hike, as they say. Uh, but, uh, we could, we could slip in w without anyone knowing that we were headed there. And I'll lean forward to Wilford and say, I think that we're heading around by this way. It gives us a better chance to get a lay of the land. And she goes, thank you, Mr. Noyce. Certainly, ma'am. Certainly. She goes, I understand that you went to visit Sebastian. That I did. He was sorry that he had missed you. Well, that's a very generous thing for him to say. I wouldn't want to impose too much on a gentleman such as himself or or, or you, you, you gentleman and lady. We appreciate the guidance that you've provided. Uh, and and he will suggest some some directions to travel uh, 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 along the uh, South Downs Way, uh, which will, from what he's describing, uh, where you're going to need to to stop off, it'll be a couple of day walk on foot to make your way there. All right. Um, Dr. Whitewood, what is your reaction to, to this? It seems to be indisputably the case, colleagues, that it is time for us, as the saviors of Albion, to raise a standard and call those that would support us to join us in a confrontation between good and evil. Totally. I'm with you, Doctor. We shall raise that standard on the South Downs, where all may see it. There goes the whole stealth entrance, but... <laughs> I don't think he's really going to carry a banner, this for a moment. I'm it sorry. Look as if he's got it in him. What was that? What was that? Yes, we'll go over the Downs, Doctor. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, Richard, what are, are you, uh, you seem like a, a person of some, uh, uh ath athletics. Are you good with a couple of day hike or is this perhaps a little much for you? Uh, I have eight in athletics. Okay. So I think I'm pretty good with that. Um, I think that I would get completely lost if it wasn't for Wilford though. Uh, yeah, so uh, you will disembark uh, in a town close on the South Downs Way, uh, 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 change into uh, a little more uh, uh, traveling clothes, as it were, and uh, head out on the walk. Uh, and Wilford, you are kind of taking point on this? I think yes, but we should all be fine. South Down Ways is well travelled, and as long as the weather remains reasonable, and it does not. 
Uh, uh, because against us. Yes. Uh, because I do think that uh, once you get settled in and uh, get prepared and you start walking, there is that first hint of the overcast, the, the first wind that comes uh, blowing up from the, the south. Uh, uh, and that, that little bit of drizzle of rain that seems fine. It should be fine. You know, you say to yourselves as you, as you head out into, to that. Uh, so, uh, could I have, Wilford, uh, you make a test for me. Uh, and I believe that I don't have that uh this would be actually there's no what do we have you have the outdoors right i have outdoors I've okay got a few skills in this area yeah uh in that case uh, you just need to make uh an outdoor spend at this first level of weather difficulty uh to to overcome this no problem at this stage. I'm more than happy to do that. Uh, it's against us. Yeah. So this is, you know, a little bit clouded over, uh, a, a little bit grisly. It is, today, it's a very long uh, uh, walking path, you know, uh, and, and fairly well maintained. It's certainly a little bit rougher. And harder to cross through in the the our our particular period of 1930s less uh, less developed. So tell me something, Wilford, that in this travel along this path, notable heading towards a version of Camelot, uh, that you will will see or feel or notice as you go along. I think I'll notice uh, looking up into the into the driving uh, precipitation flocks of birds heading out from the general direction of winchester giving me an uneasy feeling a foreboding of something that could happen uh, uh certainly you'll you'll hear that uh, uh as the 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 wind picked up uh the the calls of uh, those birds uh, seem to to twist with the wind. Uh, Richard, what's another thing that we will see on this particular walkabout here? Uh, I think it's the clouds uh, forming uh, in almost a shape. You know, it's suggestive of various things. At some point, it appears to be a great dragon, and then a huge figure of a of a man, uh, perhaps Albion themsel in themselves. Uh, caught between, you know, flashes of uh, daylight that peek through the clouds uh, and then are subsumed back into the mess. Uh, and clouds, rain, you know, we get through that first day uh, a little bit damp. Uh, uh, we have to, to, to find some kind of shelter before you set off the, the next day. Dr. Whitewood, what is it you see feel dream on on this journey um i think that um early on the morning of the second day as everyone else wakes i'm guessing that we're kind of are we are we are we living in tents um you tell me do you think you would have uh, uh well given this is supposed to be a stealthy entrance i think that we're we're in tents um uh with with rucksacks and uh that morning the our campsite is woken to see arthur whitewood dressed in the druidic robes that he addressed notons in uh declaiming from king lear uh blow winds and crack your cheeks rage blow you ca cataracts and hurricane spout till you have drenched our steeples drowned the cocks and I want to see if I can send some kind of message to that very odd gentleman I met in London, Mr. Brothers. 
Absolutely. Um, I'm not sure how to do it. I think this is an act of will. Absolutely. I think this is uh, improvisational. Uh, let's say uh, one point of stability for a spend and then uh, a difficulty five for the, the test here. Okay. So uh, stability done by one to start with. And I will invest four stability. Okay. In the roll. One D six. Ah, typical. Eleven. Okay. Uh so I do think that as you are are finishing out that that enchantment and and reaching out uh there is a, a bit of a bleed in the air and you don't it's like a fog you don't see the others isabella or wilford or richard um but you will see that figure kind of step out of the fog hazy, uncertain, uh, cane in hand, and it will greet you, Dr. Whitewood. Mr. Brothers, you told me that I would need to speak to some others. I call you forth to join those of us that would defend Albion, we have raised our standard. We gather forces to our banner. Aid us. Aid is reciprocal, Dr. Whitewood. And 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 uh we will we will offer ourselves as the leaders and warriors to take the fight to the dark and dastardly Portmore to see him and his ungodly cohorts swept from the field. You speak of we, which suggests you speak for others, but any discussion I would have is with you alone, Dr. Whitewood. Uh, so be it. Uh, and and uh, it appears we are alone. Then, if I help you, then then Albion will be restored, and all will be well in this world. And you will help me. Ah, uh, so be it. The bargain is made. Jolly good. To Winchester. And he leans forward and he says, we have so many things to show you, Dr. Whitewood. Show on! And I'm going to cost you a sanity here. As you Over. say, show on. And he says, as you ask, and I think there is a moment when he puts his hand to his face and he lifts it back and you see something and you hear a name and you hear it say, you are now in the service of Nearlathotep. And then shuts that. To Winchester! <laughs> and uh, so I believe it was uh, Isabella. Uh, what else do you see on that road? So I think for Isabella, it is not what she sees, but what she hears, particularly when it's raining. And it's, it's that strange snapping of fabric of of flags pennants in the wind, in the rain, 
when the fabric has gotten so wet that it makes a sort of cracking sound every time the wind picks it up and moves it around and when it strikes itself. Um, and when she, she looks off, she expects to see things, but it's actually the not seeing it that spooks her more than than anything else because the sound of it is so specific and clear to her ears. And I think that there is that bit after Dr. Whitewood has done that, that ceremony that Isabella, others, you will notice that uh, noise uh, who has been following along with you steers clear of Dr. Whitewood. Uh, uh, kind of positions himself uh, a fair distance. And you are perhaps a day's walk outside of Winchester uh, when uh, in the morning uh, noises will kind of wake you, Isabella, and you, Wilford, and will say, this is as far as I go. Thank you for your assistance. Will you be able to walk the quiet path in? There are some things I should say to you before I go on. I have been at this for a long, long time and I have made poor choices in my day. And I fear for your friend, the doctor. My choices were made long ago. Set me on this road. And that will come to an end here soon enough. There are there are those, the, the the black shirts, Portmore's people, that are making their way forward. But they are not they are not the kings that reign in Winchester. There are now two kings. And they fight above and below the ground. So be watchful of the labyrinth. The, the barrier that surrounds the place is the echoes of their battles. These two. And neither of them are good kings. So you'll watch yourselves? Indeed we will. Beware the worms. And he will stand up and bow to you and head off. And I think we will cut to late in the day uh, with a group of you traveling, uh, arriving in Winchester, which is a fairly developed uh, uh, place here. Beautiful cathedral, a little bit touristy at this point in time, uh, 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 and, uh, you know, has has a lovely abbey gardens and uh, 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 beautifully laid out here. Uh, and you will find yourselves uh, in town and can make arrangements to stay at a, a, a traveling house here uh, to, to recover yourselves uh, and prepare for what comes next. Does that seem reasonable? Okay, let's take our first break here and we'll come back and see how you wish to handle Winchester itself. Uh, so let's take 10. So, do you think you find a lodging house? Do you stay at 
at the the hotel uh uh do you rent rooms like where where do you think the 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 four of you walking into town uh with your bags and such uh, uh go to 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 settle in I would suggest that we don't stay at a hotel. The flow of traffic is high, and therefore the chance of getting spotted is also high. So I think a, a boarding house, some slightly longer term, so they've got less of a throughput of people, and also something less salubrious. Um, I think that would probably only inconvenience Richard and maybe Isabella. I think the doctor could now easily fit in mm. on the lower end of the social spectrum. Uh, I'm I'm thinking some kind of theatrical boarding se out of season, you know. So so it's it's where repertory companies stay. Okay. Uh, uh can will someone make a, a credit rating spend? Um, yeah, I I think my credit rating ought to go down, you know, because I don't think I necessarily have access to my normal resources. That is certainly fine. You can you can swap those points to something else if you wish. Okay. Well, Richards just that. seems to be going higher and higher. <laughs> Richard, are you pulling out your your, your cash and making those arrangements? Oh, well, uh, you know, just uh, a gift from my benefactors. Uh so yeah, you can find uh, a a place where uh, they're used to taking. Uh, people who are a little more transient, uh, maybe maybe you know both both travelers uh, and theater folk, uh, uh, which is said with a, a you know a certain amount of disdain. Uh, so yeah, uh, spend a point of credit rating, and uh, you can get yourselves set up in those lodgings, uh, discreet, uh, a little bit off from the center point of of of, of town. Uh, uh, but with the ability to, to get changed and, and set and so on. Uh, so, uh, you are in the town, you are settled. Uh, wh what do you want to do? What is your approach to this? You're in this, this city, your investigators. Tell me what happens. Uh, let's start with Richard. Um, I would like to try and look into this church that we were talking about. The uh, what were they called? The uh, B -B Pastor Dobslaw, the Church of the Protestant Cult uh, that Wilford discovered that seems to be operating here in Winchester. I imagine that they have a. Uh, you know, pamphlets, flyers, like people like looking to recruit people or where they gather service. So mm -hmm. I'd like to ask around about that. But, uh, yeah, I don't know if that might be, would that be, that's probably not oral history, is it? Uh, uh, I actually, I think oral history would, would work uh, to, to tell you about what's going on. Um, uh, and uh they will will tell you well he's they kind of pause he, he's american yes i know the type uh and he's got he's got a uh one of the farmers in uh uh close by town uh had a plot of land that had uh, uh gotten gone fallow uh, uh, and uh, this uh, Pastor Dobslaw uh, uh, is renting it and has uh, put up a, a, a great big tent uh, and uh, does gatherings there, meetings, revivals. He has a, a, a set of young folk that he has brought with him uh, uh, from the, the, the States, um, uh, and they do singing and preaching and such uh, but uh i understand they've had some problems uh, uh, uh i've heard 
that uh, Pastor Dobslaw is upset because uh, a, a number of uh, the young folk from his group, I don't want to say congregation because it doesn't seem like a real church, uh, 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 but uh, they, uh, they've gone missing. Uh, uh, probably run away. I mean, uh, they, they, they've you know, here, they've traveled, they've gone out into the big wide world and, uh, they have the chance and, uh, they probably run off. He, he's got young men and women. So you know how that happens. Yes. Yes. Well, why have the authorities not run them off? Uh, uh, he, he has his permits, uh, uh, to, to, to set up, to, to, to do the preaching and gathering uh apparently there's uh, a missionary society uh uh that uh here in in england that is sponsoring his work uh so they made arrangements for him uh, uh the authorities are mostly kind of ignoring him uh, as much as they can um but apparently he is getting a little loud because he wants once his young folk hunted down, I, I think is the way I'd put that. Uh, I suppose a shepherd wants his flock to return to him, I suppose, would be the way he'd say such a But so does, yes. do you know anything of the pastor's beliefs? I mean, we have the good old C of E right over there. Yeah. It's a little more fire and brimstone, is my understanding. Uh, 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 he takes after some of the as I understand, some of the uh, uh, radio uh, uh, preachers uh, from from the states, from California and such, Hollywood types. That's the idea. Thank God for John Reith and the, and the good old BBC, I say. Absolutely. They know how to keep things right. They keep that ship straight. They know where to do uh, 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 and keep things settled. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, I'm just happy because uh, uh, well, sometimes we get a good broadcast of the test matches, and it's excellent. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, uh, it was bitter, yes. But I'm fine. Oh, oh, thank <laughs> you. Yes, yes, thank you. Uh, 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 thank you, Malud. Uh Isabella. I think um, that she. She gathers up all the newspapers, uh, essentially. I mean, probably maybe goes to the library, actually, okay. so she can go through the past life uh, things. And she's going to spend a little time working through who the two kings are and anything that might be a reference to the worms that we're to beware, to beware. So she's doing some text analysis with the, the newspapers. That makes any sense. All right. Uh so you want to do that as oral history? You want to do that as library use? You want to do this as a cult? What is your your Ooh. focus here? It is a cult that I'm using. Okay. I mean, that's what I'm looking for, for those significant recurring things that are said offhandedly, but like feel very lock and step after a certain... That's how you know something's a cult, yeah. is when everyone uses the same wording if that makes any sense. So in terms of this, the the thematic of the worm, let's start with that. Okay. One of the things you'll find in kind of looking through the local histories and things is that there are multiple mentions of the labyrinth, of the maze. There is a hedge maze here in Winchester that is a, a, a kind of a public feature, but you'll notice that it, it there's a recurring motif of it. Uh, and that the, the, the suggestion that there are a couple of labyrinths, like a couple of different mazes, but there is one labyrinth at the heart of that. Um, they, they kind of, there's an association with a game called Troy Town with, uh, a, uh, a sense of, uh, uh, games with mazes 
that pops up uh, in a couple of different things. But the thing that will will kind of clearly there's some association with these Roman underground tunnels. Mm -hmm. There's some suggestion that like at least one story that some of the tunnels the Romans made and some of the tunnels the Romans found already made here. Uh, uh, and that, that seems to be a suggestion. There's a suggestion that the, the central maze has, has a worm in it and not a dragon. That's not worm W Y R M, but it, it speaks of a worm. It speaks of something they refer to as somebody talks about the green book. They talk about the worm. They talk about something called a dole there. Um, uh, and they they mention the, the white people. Oh, okay. Does that feel like a, enough ar archaic and cryptic material for you to, to, to work to, from? To, to work with. Yes, she has a little notebook out. She's okay. like, oh, well, I should have, I should have checked with Arbitrage house before I came here. <laughs> uh, Dr. Whitewood. Yes, once, once, once I hear from Richard that these young people are going missing, I think it's time to visit the police station. All right. Uh, so you will head to the, the Winchester police station. Uh, do you want to speak to a desk sergeant or do you want to speak to a detective? Is that uh, your goal? I, I think that I need to speak to a detective. Um, um, and uh, I'm thinking cop talk uh, and I'm thinking um, the suggestion that uh, a cousin of mine in the United States has contacted me uh, to to drop in and see uh, their child who is traveling with a certain revivalist preacher. Um, and um, they seem to have gone missing. And I'm one, what I want to know is what do the police know about this? Um, has, has, have these missing persons been reported to them? And, um, and if not, if they have, what do they know? And if not, well, that's something. So you will end up getting directed before you make the, the cop talks bend eventually to inspector chuff uh and inspector chuff has clearly been in the service for many years uh uh, uh and uh, a, a little a little portly uh, uh and uh he is you know that kind of uh, uh three days from retirement he's been here a long time uh, uh, served in the home guard during the war, that kind of thing. And uh, uh, he will say, well, you have to understand, it was doctor, right? You said you- Yes, you, you, yes, inspector. You understand, doctor, that these are young folks, uh, uh, teens and such, uh, young adults. Uh, they- They've come here with this preacher. He says it with as much disdain as he possibly can. Uh, uh, and they get here and they, you know, he's got them in, in separate barracks, but these are young men and women and they get out in the wide world. And uh, we suspect that's what's going on. There's been a couple of pairs that have headed off. We've sent word to the stations around here in the South and, of course, to London, because, you know, that might be the magnet that draws them someplace. They've heard of it. Maybe they go off and see it. Uh, so we're looking in. We're following all possible leads. Uh, we even went over to the dig site uh, near where the revival is to see if maybe... Maybe they'd gone over there to volunteer or had, had uh, dared one another to go down into the tunnels. We'd heard some talk of that. Uh, uh, but uh, we, we haven't really found anything. 
and no reports from the railway stations, no reports from London, no sign of them at all. You have to understand, you know, uh, uh, it's it's where down there's a lot of people down here. There's a lot of things going on. Uh, uh, you know the the. And uh, we've got I'm travelers. I'm sure your tourists. workload is enormous, Inspector. Yes, yes. but but, but uh, my you point know... remi- remains: you may feel that because they're Americans, you needn't worry about them; that they are to an extent disposable. Um, oh, course, now, sir, sir, them, I, 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 many I of certainly... them are related to us. Certainly, I did not say anything of the sort. There's no, there's no, no need to to say such rash things, Doctor. Well, um, he says, uh, why don't you make a cop talk, Ben, now? Yes. Uh, will one be enough? That should be enough. He says, uh, I do think they are in town. Uh, uh, like, they are. Uh, these, they, the, the, the. The, the, this pastor, this preacher, kind of keeps them in line because they don't have much with them. So their clothes are fairly distinctive. And I haven't had any reports from the railway stations. I haven't had any reports from London. So, and if a farmer or someone else had picked them up on the road hitchhiking, they would have, I would have noticed that. And... They wouldn't have been geared up to 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 take a walk too far. So I suspect that they are somewhere here in Winchester. Maybe they have a friend of a friend. Maybe they're at a boarding house and they've managed to convince the landlady or whatnot not to say anything. We are we are canvassing the area. Um but but we have other, some other, then he pauses. He says, we have some other things we're also worrying about right now that matters that there've been some, uh, some vandals and that's, that's got the C of E uh, a little upset. Uh, some, some... If if I was to make a second cop talk spend, might he might he be prepared? Because um, of course, when I when I when I worked with Chief Inspector Jepson at the yard, um, he often found that when he shared things with me, he um, I could provide some insights. Let's have you make that second spend. There you go. Now, I don't want this getting out generally. There have been some reports of it, but uh, we've had a number of the cemeteries, the, the, the graveyards in Winchester over the last half year or so suffer some desecrations, tombstones knocked over, things dug up and such. Uh, and it's it's certainly occupying our attention there and he pauses it's a little bit of burke and hair in a couple of cases if you take my, my meaning my goodness me it's better we don't in know Winchester. If i know i know i don't know if we're dealing with some some foreign vivisectionist or you know, we're dealing with with a necro necrophiliac or something of the sort uh, my goodness gracious I, I i don't take offense at this inspector but have you considered um seeking the advice of the yard and you see him like like he very clearly like the art's fine for London and their sorts. They can do their thing. And certainly, you know, the flying squad is out and about. Uh, but uh, 
Uh, you know, we here in Winchester can handle our own. I'm sure you can. But were you to feel the need, I do advise you to contact Chief Inspector Jepson. Uh, mention my name, Arthur Whitewood. Well, I'll, I'll, all right, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. I'll see if he will, 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 will speak for you. Uh, well, I, I uh, please don't, don't. It's not about him speaking for me. It's if you wanted a discreet conversation with a colleague, uh, then Jepson's your man. All right. Well, I will certainly keep that in mind, good sir. Um, and uh, I now must uh, go to the post office and send a telegram to my relatives in the United States. All right. All right. Well, uh, certainly if you could tell me where you're staying, then uh, 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 surely if I get any news, I will, will send it on to you. I, I'll tell you what, Inspector, I'll pop in every uh, I, before I, I return, uh, before I go home. Um, I haven't quite sorted out accommodation yet. All right. All right, then. Wilfred. I'm muted, and now I'm not. I would like to generate some local skullduggery points. Okay. So I think that... I want to do it through contacts, but I, I can't find any conceivable way how I can suddenly say, oh, I've got criminal contacts in Winchester. So oh, well, I would it, like to be somebody from, somebody from the gang that had to flee down to here after things got hot in London. From the Hoxton gang. Yeah. Yes, that sounds brilliant. Um, yes. So should I spend my Hoxton gang point? I think that seems fair, since the contact we kind of have there as yeah, as yeah, because uh, you can't just run around the country and say, uh, y you know, uh, I've got criminal connections everywhere. That right. just doesn't wash. Uh, so yeah, I would like to uh, get in with the local um, no dwells. Uh, is that your book of many gangs you are consulting? I am checking for names here. <laughs> Street gangs of 1930s. No. <laughs> uh, I, I always look for, I have this, that invention of murder book, so I'm looking for a name. So you will talk, and eventually you'll get directed to someone who used to be with the Hoxtons, uh, yeah. who came down here. He's not, you know, uh, uh, he runs some people here. Uh, and knows you, and his name is John Burdick. John Burdick. Uh, like John? And, and he'll say, I thought you were dead. That's the way I like people to think, John. Yeah, Being out yeah. here in the middle of nowhere, some people could say they think you're dead as well. Well, that's, that's again, that is what I would like them to think. But uh, no, I... Uh, you were back in London for a while, and then you you went off, and people said uh, you're dead in a ditch somewhere. Uh, no, well, clearly not. But uh, no, I, you're right. I have been out of London. It's been getting me down. I did quite a bit of time in East Anglia. Yeah. This. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, well, it's uh, better than most people think. Yes. Yeah. Well, that, that, that's what they say. I know. I, I I I'm close enough. I can smell London from here. But uh, I best not go up. Uh, there's there's a cell with my name on it. If I go uh, uh, waltzing back there, so exactly. this place is fine. And people made some room for me. Uh, uh, I pulled pull, pulled in a few favors. Got myself set up here. Not nothing like what I would have back home, but it, uh, a man's man's place is his palace. So. So, Wilfred, are you coming to settle in here? Is are you passing through? What can I do for you? Just passing through, but uh, I wouldn't mind calling in uh, some old debts. Uh, any chance you could ruffle up a uh, a gang of people or do a little bit of work for me? Sure. Nothing big. Just uh, we may need some help uh, dealing with those uh, religious types that are. Uh, set up out of town 
sticks and stones boys or you want something a little bit lighter on the touch uh a good distraction so maybe sticks and stones boys but hey they're people of god let's not go breaking too many bones just in ah, case uh... no they're americans uh so oh. uh but yeah we can we can we can do that uh, excellent yeah um, you just you just give me the word i'll i'll go and uh, talk to some boys uh get a handful of them together uh, uh, apply them with a, a little drink and you just tell me where to point them. You are a diamond, John. A diamond, that's for sure. And can I'll... I can I ask? Should I ask? Why? Oh, a uh, friend of mine, his daughter was uh, with him. When she came back home, she weren't right. And uh, he's asked me to... Uh, Lay down a little bit of justice and investigate what's happened to her. Uh, yeah, I heard that they had uh, some some of those kids go missing. Yeah, none of them shown up in your direction? No, not not that I would have heard. Hmm. They would have stuck out like a sore thumb, so you, if, they, if they'd run amok with our boys, I would have heard it. That's good to know. Good to know. I'm sure there'll be... Uh... An easy pushover. You know what Americans are like. Mm -hmm. No stomach for fighting. I know that uh, when they come into town now, the 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 the, the that that priest preacher whatever whatnot uh, uh, keeps them in little herds. Has one of his uh, right hand people kind of sh chaperoning, shepherding them. Ah, uh, yeah, I'd heard that cold sore bloke mm. ain't up to much. Yeah. Yeah. No, good to know, John. Thanks yep. very much. I owe you. Okay. You just said, tell me the word and uh, uh, I'll, I will send them to do the business. Diamond. Thank you very much, John. And I'll shake his hand. Okay. And wish him well. And then report back. Okay. To so the, to that, the boarding news, house. that news will, will come back. Uh, Richard. Yeah, we clarified. Do we know if Pastor Dobbslaw is in any way aligned with Portmore, or is he just another player here just, in this area? It was just an oddity here in the area that you picked up on. Right. Uh, and I think to confirm something that, that Dr. Whitewood heard, that, uh, in fact, that dig that I mentioned in the previous article is actually in kind of, uh, on a neighboring farm to where that revival tent is set up. Um, it occurs to me that we don't actually have eyes or, you know, intel on the enemy here, particularly. Do we? we don't know who Portmore has here. We don't know where they are. We don't know what's going on with them. Um, sure. What do you want to spend to find that out? Magic? I think I want to uh, perhaps enter the Aethers again. And let me see. I think I wrote down potential uses of some of the. I I think. I think that. Bag where sins are made real, what black marks stain the souls of others, or text. Directions here are emotions. Can strong emotions provide a compass for the real world? So I'm wondering if I could perhaps use and it is the an ast is the astral plane. Mm -hmm. uh, attack as well so i'm wondering if perhaps um avarice you know power the center the, the hunger for power because surely a uh a follower any group of portmores will be you know driven by the need to seize a power greater than the material world yes like much as we are uh to command the world itself rather than simply raise in a you know material position i wonder if that might yeah be I, i'm going to give you a a vision in this if you're making your magic spend for this mm -hmm. uh this will do it as an investigative i think that you will have a vision and you will see two enormous black crows uh and they 
kind of stare each other down uh, uh, and sort of dancing between them is is a white feathered crow like an albino crow smaller kind of dancing around and about uh and we will see in the background there is a flock of of crows uh, uh smaller you have the sense say a group of followers uh but you'll notice that they all have like seeds in their beaks and i think you'll see them flying around these smaller crows and planting those seeds uh and the sense is that that they are planting them around and you see where they plant them you will see a wriggling worm come up from those seeds. So, obviously, it's all metaphorical. Uh, was that a, there are two two larger crows, right? White dancing around a black. So there's crow. there's two larger black crows, but yeah, then the third larger. one is this white crow, smaller that's kind of dancing around. I would say subservient. Like kind of doesn't fit in, and then there's also a group of smaller black crows that yeah. follow planting seeds. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, following in the wake of the the black, the large yeah. black. Yeah, like uh, uh, I would say, the sense you get is certainly they are the flock of those two big crows, the carrying out what they uh, are are telling. Which I think that Richard will, you know, he'll, he'll have that vision, you know, as he comes away from his body. And I think that when he comes back to it, you know, he starts madly scrawling on, you know, what it could mean. Uh, other things, I think, you know, you get like the, the low rent murder board of uh, <laughs> Dobbs Law's, Dobbs Law, the flock, uh, another uh, a servant, the white crow, a servant, uh, um, you know. To quote Tom Waits, uh, you know, what are they building in there? Uh, <laughs> what are they doing with those seeds? Um, and I'll relay that to the rest of the group, you know, uh, that, you know, the spirits of Albion have shown me that Gobsar could indeed be our enemy here, but he is not alone and he works with with another, perhaps, uh, then they, and between them they have a servant, uh, but, but their flock is doing something to the earth, planting something, something, a snake, perhaps a worm. And we all know the dangers of worms. It makes perfect sense. He is sacrificing those young people in those tunnels. They are the seeds from which your worm grows, Richard. Hmm. You may be onto something, Doctor. Your time, time has given you great insight. I'm, I'm happy to see that you you come this far. Everything becomes increasingly clear, Richard. Yes, yes. <laughs> we'll finish this once around, and then we'll bring everybody together for like a a, a conference. Isabella, what do you want to do next? You are muted. So, who are our two kings then? And this is the thing is, maybe it's a Dobbs law, I'm, but I'm looking for the names of the two people, the two personalities that sure. seem to to be the ones that pop up and are talked about and have divided the city, maybe, or at least pulled. Yeah. That so are you looking opinions. into that or are you looking into the Portmore thing? I'm not looking into Portmore. I know Portmore's around, um, okay. but right now I want to understand the terrain here. Okay. Does that make any sense? Um, A absolutely. Uh, why don't you do you have 
Uh, let's have you, do you have a cult? Yeah, of course I do. Okay. Let's have you make uh, uh, an occult uh, spend. Okay. What am I trying to eat or beat? Just, just a spend. Oh, okay. Yeah, then this, I this, will this, do yeah. that. Okay. Well, that's right. It's investigative power. Yeah. Forget the, the thing. Sorry. Uh, one of the things that you will pick up and hear is uh, a, a name that pops up a couple of times. And in particular of late uh, has been trying to stymie, stop, like slow down uh, the excavation that is going on with those those Roman tunnels that were found. Okay. Uh, and it's notable to you uh, because this person is mentioned as an antiquarian, uh, uh, a person who uh, specializes in the esoteric uh, uh amateur historian um uh but a well regarded person here uh, uh who he's not people speak of him like he's a gentleman but it's not entirely clear like what his actual like background or or, or status is but he has a lot of money uh, 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 unclear, like where where that comes from. There's some suggestion that maybe he has investments in South Africa or California and has some gold mining interests. That that's unclear. But his name is Julian Balfour. Uh, and his. His thing with the Roman dig is is essentially that this is this is the kind of thing that needs to be researched before you go digging away at it. And uh, you know, this is the the history of Winchester and you know, having a team from Cambridge uh uh down here uh excavating is just an insult uh to the local historians. Okay. Um and certainly, like his name, kind of keeps popping up for you in in odd places. Like there probably are uh, probably is at least one shop that deals in uh, uh, the the kinds of books that Chessover dealt in, and his name kind of pops up there, like as a as a purchaser and and so on. Um, Another practitioner. Definitely have that field. All of the, the vibe and sense. Um, especially because, like, it's unclear how old he is. Mm -hmm. And it's unclear how long he's been here. Interesting. That seemed like a fair thing. He has yeah. a uh, he has a house in town, uh, and apparently he has a number of business things. So he does, you know, he does receive people. Indeed. Um. Interesting. Okay. And so. His attention is on the dig, and Dobbsla is located right next to the dig. Yes. His attention particularly is on getting that dig shut down, you would say. Okay. All right. Dr. Whitewood. Um, I think it's time to... Um, 
to an extent grasp the bull by the horns. I want to go and 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 visit the Reverend Dobslaw. Absolutely. Um, or at least, you know, have a look at, at the location. I think you can absolutely head out and go to meet uh, uh, with uh, Reverend Dobson. Let me find a, a good picture here for you. Let's find someone who looks particularly American from these photos. I'm not sure if I have uh, anything. Oh, here's a good one. Put him. Uh, I will put him there. He is next to uh, Noise and the Italian. Uh, so you head out. Oh. I mean, it is it is a classic. You know, they've got a big revival tent. Uh, they've got a couple of barns on the farm property that they are renting out as as sort of uh uh barracks for their people uh and he himself has has you know paid money to to stay in a cottage uh you know and you've seen some of these young people around town they're definitely all in groups you know with very simple uh, uh plain outfits uh, there's always at least one kind of adult supervisor keeping an eye on them as they're handing out the pamphlets and such. Uh, uh, but I think you will uh, head out. Is and... it possible to to go out there when when he's doing his thing? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, they do. Uh, they do sort of uh, uh, early evening uh, services. They are, let us say, not particularly well attended. Uh, there are a few people there. Uh, uh, there are some people clear there as gawpers. Uh, uh, there are some people who are clearly interested. Uh, and there are some people who are there because uh, he does serve a, a cider, uh, you know, non-alcoholic. Uh, and uh, uh, they they clearly uh, uh, have some some baked goods and such that they they serve out. And he is a old school millennial uh uh you know the coming storm uh uh we've seen what happened in in europe america is the the place of the new messiah uh you know that kind of uh uh, uh radio preacher style uh 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 person and you will hear and then he has the young people they they sing you know he has like they are clearly chosen because they're uh, uh, you know, attractive, uh, young, but also like uh, are a good choir, but of of like the kind of revival music that you don't get here uh, uh, with the C of E as, as with like, mm. uh, um, these are not hymns as I know them. No, no, they are songs, you know, take me to the river and all of that. Uh, uh, and uh, you know they'll they'll finish up and he goes around and he he glad hands uh, and talks to people and he'll see you and he will come over and he will say now I don't think I've seen you before good sir um no reverend um uh, I I I'm a visitor to Winchester and um you and can I just call a... me Jimmy there's no need to use reverend just call me Jimmy uh, well that's very good Jimmy my name is Doctor Whitewood. Ah, doctor. And what are you a doctor of, uh, 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 Dr. Whitewood? Uh, many things. Um, but that's irrelevant. Fair enough. Fair enough. James. Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy. Jimmy. No, James. There's no James is here. Just Jimmy. James is in the Bible. Jimmy. Very well, Jimmy. Um, I, 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 I have an interest in uh, the revivalist movement let me say and all, all uh, right. and and i suppose i am curious why you are in winchester and um and 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 how you got here i it it, it it's a long way to bring a, an entire company cuz all your your choir appears to be uh, americans appear to be americans as well am i am i right in that yes well, it, it is a long story, if you don't don't mind me saying so. So uh, 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 he begins to tell the story about uh, uh, some, uh, you know, 
uh, American British missionary connections, Lady Courtney Dunleavy, uh, you know, this organization, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and he would go on. And it what eventually becomes clear is that they'd actually intended to go to Europe uh, uh, as as he puts it. We really intended to go to Europe uh, to, to travel around there, uh, to get right on the devil's doorstep uh uh you know with the papists and really bring the word to them uh uh you know uh but but we couldn't get uh couldn't get the 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 visas and we tried all over uh or had had some real problems with that uh and so we eventually uh you know we were already over here we decided to settle in and 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 do what good word we could maybe raise some more money maybe in the meantime see if we could could find some things out uh and, and stuff uh, we talked about going to 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 where the the spanish are uh there uh but uh, uh we were told that that's that's kind of unsettled uh and that would be a real real danger right now uh so we, we'll do that but eventually we're hoping to get to to get to Italy. um i think i want to get a view of how genuine is is Jimmy Dobbs law? Okay. Uh let's have you spend assess honesty. Is he at all sinister or is he uh straight? He is crooked but not sinister. How's that sound? Yes. Fine. You yes. can tell that this is a guy who's probably pocketing money. He's got a fine line of patter. He's got that little con man, showman kind of thing going on. Uh, but in terms of he's, sinister and stuff, he's right. he's he is he is genuinely just a charlatan. Yes. Yes. He may um, be bad, but he's yeah. not dangerous to know. Uh, and and like like they're you know if you bring it up, he he is genuinely concerned about those kids okay. because because a he can't afford to lose any more of them uh but b he you know there are parents back home and there are people that are donors and such and he he would like to you know there's a that that could be create some real bad news some real bad talk if if we were to get back that he lost some kids okay uh okay. that's you that's know that's what I need you to know. Yeah, uh, um, and and uh, you know he will 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 sit down and chat with you. He'll pour you a drink, you know. Uh, and... No, no, no. No, I, you sure? I, yeah, that, that's very kind of you, uh, Jimmy. Um, um, Don't know if I can can trust a man who doesn't take a drink when I offer it to him. Uh, well, uh, you have to understand that um, social mores here are somewhat different, perhaps, than what you're used to. Um, but, um, oh, oh, so I have to offer you one of those, one of your, one of your leggers, because I tried that and it's just, just, uh, thick like mud. Um, simply Jimmy, my strong advice, mm -hmm. the devil is coming for your young people. Dr. Whitewood, uh, I, I know that the devil is around us all the time. The devil is always coming for our, our young people. But it seems to me the way you're saying it, it seems to, to sound like you're talking more specific. I am, Jimmy. I need you to understand that the rest of your young people are in danger. Good day. Dr. Uh, 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 and you'll you'll head off and kind of leave him a little flummox there. He'll pick up your drink, slam it back. Wilford. Yes. Um, that's put a few things on its head now that we know uh, that maybe the creature isn't the source of utter evil. So I think the dig 
Let's Absolutely. Go to the dig. I, I, I head over there. Uh, you know, uh, it's it's a, a a dig site. You've worked dig sites. You've got references. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Um, you'll talk to the local foreman. Uh, uh, he'll say, "Oh, yeah, it's good work. It's easy work." Uh, you get you get digging. Uh, and then you go, oh, I think I found something. And then the boys, will, these these college boys will come down and push you out of the way. And you get to go and sit on your ass for a couple of hours while they uh, while they uh, chuck around in it. Well, you can sign me up for some of that. That's Absolutely. For sure. Absolutely. But, uh, I mean, I've heard these uh, stories that the, the ground gave way and somebody fell into a tunnel. Oh, yeah. That's how they found it uh, uh, originally uh uh was some some sink you know i'd heard that there were tunnels all over the place but uh, uh i don't know if you remember we had uh, that bad storm last year uh, near to be a hurricane uh uh and it washed washed off the 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 hillside uh cuz they've been doing some farming there and and uh uh it got thinner uh so uh the, the somebody was out there walking uh that's the main chamber that they're checking. But uh, right now, there are some other tunnels leading off from it. We, we haven't even really mapped those because, because A, there's so much in that main place. But, uh, you know, B, we don't know how safe those tunnels are. So we, we've got, we've got a, a few dozen yards in any direction, but they definitely go on. There's some, there's some that have some refuse and stuff kind of blocking them up. Uh, but I'm sorry, I'm doing my southern accent here. I apologize. I'm, already, I'm still stuck in that mode. Say, but we'll we're checking those out. Uh, there were some some frescoes and paintings in the uh, original thing, old Roman stuff. Um, and uh, we think it might be a martyr's place because of the bones we found. I would like to spend a point in archaeology. Okay. Will he give me access to his yeah to his papers? Yeah. What I found. Uh, 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 he says, uh, "Well, you know, do you do you want to come down and see the the chamber?" Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. That, that uh, would we'll, be we'll, we'll do it like Not we're, we're like we're showing it. you around the the, yeah. the the place here. Yeah. And. Uh, they have found one of the tunnels that kind of leads to above ground a ways away. Uh, and so he'll actually walk you down that tunnel um, uh, to, to get into what is a, a larger, like strikingly larger chamber. You're kind of surprised uh, uh, where you can see they've got it boarded up, but a little bit of the daylight comes through where they got the slats of wood where the person fell in. Uh, and there are a couple of tunnels off from this place. And there's, looks like maybe there was some kind of altar. There's some uh, paintings that are very faded out, uh, uh, you know, and they've got string around and marks and, and things like that. And there are people digging, you know, they've, they've got certain areas that they've got blocked off and they're they're checking through and so on. Um and he'll show you around in here. Um, Wilford, do you want to make that archaeology spend? I've done the archaeology spend, yeah. Okay. I think the thing that will strike you as you kind of go uh, and and are looking around and looking at the altar, the painting is like it's clearly Roman era, but it's very strange. Like... Like you're not sure what it is. It's it doesn't look like like early Britain religious painting. It doesn't look like early Roman. It's it's too early to be Christian. Um uh uh you're not sure what it is. They're they're clearly trying to 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 figure out how to like map and restore that. But the other thing that you will note is when you kind of go over and look at the the, the bones and such are the teeth marks on them. 
They're old. Yeah, they they're close to being human teeth, but they're not they're not entirely. Not entirely. And and he'll say, yeah, they're still, you know, and you're kind of looking at that. He'll say, yeah, they 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 don't know. Maybe these are martyrs that got tortured or. Or or something that there's some talk about maybe desperate people maybe they got sealed in here. Um, I'm willing to make another spend in either forensics on the bones for a bit more detail or a cult to try and sort of pin down an area for this um, for the sort of frescoey as you said it. Clearly wasn't Roman or early Britain. Uh which which one are you more interested in? The bones or the frescoes? I'm more interested in the bones. Okay. Then why don't you make that for I will spend. spend that point of forensics. Uh, yeah, forensics. Uh, uh, a number of these bones are certainly not Roman age bones. They are certainly more recent. More recent. Uh, uh, that that that's clearly kind of been ignored or avoided, like like because because they're afraid that that kind of thing might show that this is a hoax or something like that. Mm. Um, but clearly, there are some that are you would guess sixteenth, seventeenth century. Actually, no, uh, probably actually more like early nineteenth century. Uh, a kind of thing that would probably be for your mind that there are some older ones like a, 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 like there was a period of time for the, the older ones that might be closer to Roman but then there's a more recent layer that is like early 19th century and then on okay. uh, nothing more recent than say 50 years ago Ooh, okay. So left fallow for a period of time yeah. and then clearly something else has gone on. Yeah. More Do recent, but not yeah. Right Do you want to make a, a then that a cult spend? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm spending through these points, but what are they there for apart from spending? I think uh, a probably cult, okay, that leaves me on zero occult, but that's fine. I've got build points if I need. I think you probably already know what I'm about to tell you. But I think this is the moment that Wilfred will realize that this is the one of the chambers probably abandoned, kind of moved on uh, of a ghoul cult. Mm. Uh, and like old, and I think you'll look at the, like the other tunnels that go on and like, yeah, that doesn't sound good to you. No. I will thank the foreman of the dig site. Yeah, you come back tomorrow then? Yeah, most definitely. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Honest work yeah. is always good. And as you say, it's that easy. Pay packets at the end of the week. I can do that. Okay. That's fine. All right. We'll see you tomorrow then. Superb. And I will report back to my friends. Okay. Could I have uh, tagged along with Wilford for that? It's just been like his uh, simple friend to a uh, strong worker you know you wouldn't believe it because of his hands but uh he needs <laughs> to find a trade now his dad's taking me out just because uh i've got uh art spends and i was thinking i could look at those frescoes and perhaps get something more uh you know sure let's have you make that art 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 spend where is art that is in technical yes it's in technical there we go make the art spend uh so i think that uh you will realize that the the the, the paintings that they have have dripped away um like they're clearly old but they've been like you would guess maybe 50 60 years ago there was some attempt to restore some of them uh, and uh, 
there is one place amongst them that you will see like a more recent thing, uh, uh, a painting. And if you remember, uh, uh, if you've seen The Omen too, like they go down in the basement, they're seeing those pictures and they're kind of abstract, but I think you'll see one that looks like someone in a very crude way has tried to draw a face. And I think you can copy that down. Does that seem fair? Uh, seems to call out to me this space. I must sketch it quickly in my book while Wilford uh, talks before me. Absolutely. Let's take five second break and then we'll come back. So I think we cut to, do you think you're in the, the boarding house? Are you in a, a, a tavern? Are you, a, a, you know, a tea house, something else? Where do we see the four of you seated right now? Oh, I think I'd, I'd, I'd really like to be the back room of a CD railway railway tavern. Okay. You know, uh, where Richard, Isabella, and I certainly stand out. But Wilford fits in beautifully. Right. Smoky haze in yes. the air. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, dim lighting. Uh, somebody out, you know, with you know, the hand, well, I can't remember what you call those, not a harmonium. Uh, um, uh, concertina. Concertina out there uh, 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 and uh, 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 singing singing songs and uh, uh, noise and stuff that covers over the the, the conversation that the, the four of you are having conspiratorially here in the back. Uh, and I imagine that the last word we hear is ghouls as we come into the scene. <laughs> That's what I tell you. Ghouls. Um, these young people are at risk. I've advised the Reverend Dobbslaw to leave. Uh, and we must bring the fire of illumination. We must, we must scourge these undead creatures from those tunnels. Otherwise, why are we knights? The end. And I, I sort of stop it. She goes, uh, the, they're in the tunnels. That's their home territory. There's probably quite a few of them. Uh, whatever. But they, we have no, nothing to believe that they are agents of Portmore or enemies. The, the dragon lay beneath the tunnels and, you know, beneath the earth and opposed us. But these ghouls, I mean... Richard, you cannot be suggesting that Albion can be built upon such foundations that we would turn our back on on the, the, uh, the, the risk, the, the death, the preying upon of, of um, innocence. This is not the Albion I would seek to make. I fear your your faith may have led you down a path that has no foundation at all, Doctor. I, what evidence do we have that these ghouls are taking these these young? We have belief. Yes, a strong and well founded belief. And. I would say, Doctor, that I do not wish an LBM based upon nothing more than fear of the unknown. I do, it is not to fear it, it is to scourge it. Wilford, for God's sake, you must, you must, you must support me in this. I do agree that the ghouls should be purged or we find out what's controlling the ghouls. They haven't been here in a long time. And suddenly they reappear? That is odd, Richard and Isabella. Would you not agree? There is a gentleman who makes a fairly significant... He speaks about that the dig should not go forward, and he is trying to stop it. He has a strange history in that he seems to have been here for a long time, but everyone's very hazy on the details. Um, 
he is at the very least a magic user, I would say, but he might also know something about these, be he friend or foe to the ghouls. I am uncertain. And I agree. Sort of we find out more from yeah. local who knows something of the history here. Well, do it quickly then. Uh, Richard will exchange a look with Grimaldi. Uh, <laughs> there was a fire from the stone. Uh, oh dear. <laughs> she sort of steps and says, they are organized. They are a group of creatures that work together. They are as intelligent as humans. They are not insignificant foes if there is any number of them. But my dear Isabella, they are not knights, transcendent knights illuminated by the desire to make an Albion. No, they're not, but they've been they here for a very beasts. long time. She goes, and we need to understand that they're in the way of what we need to do first. Well, Richard. act swiftly then. Do you know of any magic that could aid us in defeating ghouls? I, well, we, uh, our, our usual uh, array of powers could be brought, I suppose, against any foe, but I, I still wonder, are these truly our foe? I, uh, can I make a spend to actually know something about ghouls? Sure. Cool. I, I, I'll tell you this, that is a particular thing that you would know, given your background. You know that that they there are hierarchies and tiers to these to ghouls, but you also know that some of their tunnels extend out into the dreamlands. Like, they they have the ability to, to move out to there, and that, that tunnels can reach that way depending on where they're at. Um, uh, does that seem like a fair answer? Yes, I think that's a fair answer. I was, mm, could perhaps uh, my cat friend, Ulfa, have told me of the ghouls and, uh, you know, that they enter the dream. They're not, I mean, I obviously as a player, uh, I'm well steeped in Lovecraftian ghoul lore. Uh, right, <laughs> but my, you know, my, the general impression I've always had of the ghouls is that they are, just like humans, uh, largely driven to either their own purposes rather than the great evil that Doctor Whitewood has presumed that they are, uh, that they are carrion eaters and rather than predators, generally speaking. They yes, a particular old entity. Yes, but that yes. is actually the danger. Is they can be that way, but uh, 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 if they become more organized as a witchcraft cult or a follower of a particular old one or those kinds of things, when they get organized around that, that, that is when they become more dangerous. Um, that, that I think that's something that you would know. Left to their own devices, Croatoan, kind of below the ground, uh, uh, they can just be their, their, the, the people of the deeps, but sometimes that can get more sinister. I, the ghouls, the, the people below, their tunnels extend even into the realms of dream, and there they walk among the others of Kadath, and in peace, but they can be terrible foes, and I would, they are led astray, or if they are confronted with an enemy, and I would not seek us to become that enemy, if we were not all, if they were not already arrayed against us, Doctor, it's all I simply say. Albion restored will still be a land of many strange and wondrous neighbors. Or are we to cast the Fae out from the land entirely? We would, Jenny. There will be other powers in the walking this realm. I, I simply say that we, if we used to go down there with fire and torch, perhaps we would be bringing our own enemies against us. We need to return them. If they have been led astray to a path of predation, we must return them to to merely eaters of the dead. Allies. Yes, allies. 
Then we investigate. Come with me. Yes. Yes. Seek out, seek out this person who 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 is uh, who wishes to to disrupt the dig. Um, uh, I think he may be one of the kings. He may be. He he may be. In 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 which case he will have things to tell you. Um, but Wilford, we will need lanterns. We will need flashlights. I'm already on the case, Doctor. I've got a job at the dig site. I have all that equipment. Aha! Uh -huh. Well done. What we don't have is a stout Thompson machine gun. <laughs> Give me some days. <laughs> I'm working on that. Put more dynamite on the list. Ah, uh -huh. Miss Grimaldi. <laughs> dynamite, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> How I forgot. <laughs> I will see if perhaps... There is some art that could bolster such as crude tools as lights, perhaps some way of us being able to pierce the darkness with our magic. Uh, the only thing I, I wonder is, uh, as I lay out my sketch of the face from the walls, what significance this figure has in all of this? And I'll allow everyone else to see it, and I don't know if that face is significant to anybody i think you will hear a cough and you will see there is a figure in the doorway and i think camera drawing to face and you will see clearly the person represented in that image I'm sorry to interrupt this conversation, but uh, Mr. Brothers sent me. Ah, please take a seat. Yes. Um, he stops. You see him. Look, he pulls a chair out. He dusts it off. Clearly, he's well-dressed. He will, will sit down. Um, how might we address you? Uh, my friends, this is, uh, could I describe you as a friend of a friend? I was not given any information as to who you all are. Before I announce myself, and he kind of looks at the, the picture that you've got there, Richard, I know who I, whom am I speaking with? Are you are speaking to the illuminated knights of Albion Transcendent. That assists me not one whit in understanding this situation, good sir. Um, and this sort of happens. Well. Yeah, sir. She, she goes, my name is Isabella Grimaldi. Parents looks at you, Richard. You are? Mr. Richard Frazier. And you you age remarkably well, my friend. My family is long lived, yes. I'm sure that is a picture of uh, my grandfather or some such. Yes, yes, I'm sure. Among uh, Roman dig site. I understand it. There are some more recent materials there. Mm -hmm. uh, and my most excitable friend, who are you? Mr. Brothers didn't mention me. I'm, I'm Arthur Whitewood, Dr. Whitewood. He oh, promised the, me help. The the, the Satanist. Uh, th th there is some pressure along that line, but that's beside the point. And it would be rude of me not to ask, sir, what are you are called? It turns to you, Wilford. Uh, my name's Wilford, ah, simply. And so I assist my friends. 
So I was not given much information from Mr. Brothers. He said that it would behoove me to come here at this time, that there would be people here who would understand my situation and perhaps might be enemies, but might be allies in this. Oh, allies, my dear friend, allies, of course. Your energy does you credit, but perhaps uh, I am a Julian Balfour. Hmm. I've read your name. You are significant in this town. I am. And right now there is a war going on. And I and my family are battling against a foe who has brought in allies from the outside. Perhaps, perhaps you might be allies to me and mine against his agents. Of course. Well, then uh, I will tell you that it is a battle for the heart of this city, for the labyrinth that lies at the center, that uh, that struggle has been going on for some time and the balance is shifted. And it is my people versus the Lord of Worms. And he has brought in fascists who have begun poisoning my people's places, seeding them with unpleasantness. My friends, Baltimore is one of the kings, and I would see this gentleman crowned in favor of Portmore any time. The Lord of Worms. Yes. I, I, not a name by which we know him, but the fascist connection is obvious. Uh, you yes. mis you mistake me. It is Portmore who is allied to my enemy. I, the, yes, all right then. But the principle remains. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. You see him now. There's a certain amount of hesitation that 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 yeah. uh, uh, Whitewood is is kind of. Uh, he is particularly enthusiastic today. Please. Speak further. We do need to understand the lay of the line to be of any use to anyone. I shall get a round of drinks. And I think that's actually we're going to stop <laughs> with with Balfour uh, uh, at the table, uh, uh, essentially our ghoul lord. Yes. Uh, uh, seated with you. Um, a slight Parisian lilt to his accent. Uh, the green yeah. book. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, perhaps his strange shadow being cast across the back wall, right? Is he uh, slightly out of proportion with his human dimensions? Yes. Uh, that's what we'll take up. Um, everybody may uh, uh, recover uh, uh, essentially uh, two points uh, of investigation, if you wish. All right. Does that sound reasonable? Uh, let us, uh, the plan is we will take up next time with, with Balford's briefing, with you finding out about who Portmore has sent, uh, with this worm Lord, uh, and, uh, such and the battle for the Winchester labyrinth. Um, uh, let us, 
uh, do our stars and wishes, if you don't mind. Dr. White, we were so excitable. I think I'll have you go first. <laughs> no, I just love the idea of trekking across the South Downs and 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 having a storm in which I could raise the standard of the, Al the Knights of Albion. And then you let me conjure brothers. Um, uh, albeit the association with Niall Athotep Nile is, is, is not necessarily advantageous in the longer term. In the short term, it's delightful. Absolutely. The short term is what matters, right? Uh, anything wishes-wise? Um, no, just push me towards the edge. Okay. Uh, Paul? Uh delightful session uh i really enjoyed um isabella's uh interactions uh i thought they were delightful and, and uh don't want to say the opposite of, of the manic doctor uh <laughs> but it was a nice calming influence uh sherry that's for sure um alan um yeah, probably one of your most notable characters i think the doctor <laughs> Uh, and you're playing with such a plume currently. And um, thanks, uh, Will, for jumping in on that dig site. Uh, um, you know, I, I couldn't cover every base, and I thought that was delightful. I, you, you know, thought, you know, I, I can build on what I'd found. So thanks very much for uh, helping in. And to you, Lowell, I thought the tomb scene, uh, just for a sheer example of, um, how you can actually make uh, Trailer Cthulhu work. You know, there were some really good spends there. That, that um, I, I thought that was a good example of of how Trailer Cthulhu should be played. Um, you know, so anybody watching, that's the bit to watch. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, anything wishes wise? Uh, no, too early to say a flamethrower. So okay. I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> too it. early for flamethrower. Uh, Richard. Yeah, um, I really enjoyed the uh, Wilford getting a you know his mob contacts and uh, getting up a bunch of rowdies to go and rough up some uh, Baptists, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, which makes maybe needed, I guess. Uh, they appear to be kind of like slightly unwitting patsies at the moment. It seems. Uh, yeah, a delicious larder uh, for someone. Yes, exactly. Yeah, uh, I really, of course, dig the uh, Lord of the Worms versus uh, Balfour, like. The ghoul uh, civil war is an interesting one to go for. Um, I also really enjoyed the imagery of you know that you gave for the uh, the crows and the flock and all of that. That was very good. Uh, it was good because uh, right, well, we are magicians. Should be able to get some sort of vague sense to point us in the right direction or mm -hmm. give us some greater understanding of this stuff than we would do normally. And I thought that was done really well. But I like that Isabella was extremely practical and you know got a lot of in information with just, you know, hitting the streets and like talking to people and all of that. I feel the the practical aspects of our party are covered nicely by Wilfred and Isabella. Uh, and uh, I'm of course enjoying Whitewood's uh, extreme fervor. Um, wasn't Mr. Brothers Nodens rather than Niall No, yeah. he spoke about Nodens spoke about no, and okay. said no, and said it. effectively you know if you want to go talk to some other old ones i can help you with that mm, i see i thought it was the opportunity to go further and further down the nodens route no i'm even more happier to have a uh, the black pharaoh involved yes um, yeah and uh yeah i i thought uh thanks for letting me pop in to spend the art thing because you mm -hmm. know like we structure it as what do you want to do what do you want to do what do you want to do but then sometimes in the middle of somebody else's one, I'm like, well, I think I'd rather just be there and like, you know, not the focus of the scene, but like suddenly, like, you know, I've been popping in a little bit on like an extra in the background. And then oh, suddenly, that, so. That's great. That was a super, super move and really, really uh, uh, added to that. Yeah. I know sometimes it can get awkward in the framing of stuff, you know, <laughs> to just be like, I've been here the whole time. But yeah, you know, <laughs> you can do it like that. But yeah. Another good session. Wishes wise. Uh, you know, I obviously I want to um, form. So I know that neither of the uh, neither king is good, but perhaps one of them is more amenable, uh, more agreeable, and uh, yeah, 
some sort of deal making with the the ghouls. Certainly don't want us to take on the task of uh schools are tough bad news man yes they <laughs> are <laughs> <Mess you up>. <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh awesome uh and sherry um i do think that this session was maybe one of the most perfect um uh, demonstrations of the different mo's that the characters have i mean just so much and since it was all research and looking into things we just got a really good taste of that it was lovely every time we went around the table and everyone was off in a completely different direction or came in for a strange assist and, and it was just lovely it was well everything that's good about this this game and these players and this gm <laughs> um so i i adored this session anything wishes wise um Ooh. I, I think one of the things is is a there's the fight between the ghouls and in the fascists. But one of the things is is that there was the sort of the promise of the tunnels, that magic, the old thing of the apples and the hedgehogs. I would love to see some of that. Okay. Theming as we go through this, if that makes any sense, that we sort of rediscover the the foundations of Winchester. If okay. That makes any sense. The Winchester Labyrinth and yeah, and, exactly. And such but, but, yeah. yeah. Uh, like the Troy Town and and all of all of that mm -hmm. uh, such. Uh, awesome. Thank you all so much. I'm going to stop the recording.